citizen journalism, social networking websites, Pakistan. You know, I never really understood the importance of citizen journalism portals and social networking websites like Facebook, Twitter, Friendster, Orkut, and what have you. I thought, what was the point of being wrapped up in this endless virtual dialogue, which neither had a beginning or an end? But it was abroad during my master's program when one day during our first semester, my professor walked in. And here's a guy who has 20 plus years of experience as a print journalist. And he looks at us bright-eyed, bushy-tailed new students and he says, point blank, print media is dead. Very hard-hitting back then as a print media journalist for me. Um, but, but back then, so I never really understood what an impact it would make. How citizen journalism portals and social networking websites have now made us, the young Pakistani youth, as instigators of change. How they've brought, how they've brought on tangible change in our country. And I'll tell you why as I proceed. Take a look at Scene Report, for example. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Scene Report functions as it's basically one of our first uh, citizen journalism portals in Pakistan. And it functions as a portal where anyone who has access to a mobile phone that can take photos or make videos and who has access to the internet and a computer can report news on the go as they see it, when and where they see it, via MMS, SMS, you name it. Now, interestingly enough, Scene Report was established by a group of young Pakistanis, young men, in light of the 2007 state of emergency that was declared by General Pervez Musharraf. Now, I'm sure all of you are aware, are aware of that time. It was an extremely dark time. As Pakistanis, we, re we really didn't know what the hell was going on in the country because barred from transmission, our local TV channels were off air. There was a total media clampdown. We didn't know what was happening in the country. But Scene Report, what it did was, it stood as a portal which let us discuss what was happening, which let us post live updates in the long march that followed in the months after the state of emergency. It was cathartic. It was such a great release. In addition to Scene Report, there are an immense amount of portals out there, and they're cropping up, just as we know it. Natasha Narani was talking about Snapistan. There's so many young Pakistanis out there who are trying to make a difference, who are trying to release their pent-up frustrations, to talk about their grievances, to talk about the shortcomings of the country, of the present government. Now, why on the other hand, see, it's unfortunate because we are a nation of critics. We're complete pessimists, and so am I. I don't really blame us. I don't blame us for being disillusioned. I don't blame us for being jaded. I've been there as well. But at the same time, I really feel that the young generation in this country can offer so much, can do so much. And I'll tell you why. Now, one of my examples is, I I'm taking it from the Maurice and Munib Sealkot incident. Now, I'm sure all of you are aware of what had happened. Basically, two young brothers, Maurice and Munib, were dragged out onto a street in Sialkot and bludgeoned to death by a crazy, angry mob, completely bloodthirsty. They wanted revenge. The mob had thought that Maurice and Munib were criminals and had left this place of crime just in the wee hours of the morning. Now, ironically enough, ladies and gentlemen, someone from that mob made a video on his mobile phone of the incident. Now, these injustices are happening in Pakistan at every drop of a hat, every second, every hour. Someone is getting murdered. Someone is getting raped. Someone is getting robbed. But that video, that mobile phone video, which spread like wildfire on the internet and on our local TV channels, what happened because of that? It stood as ocular proof for all of us, ocular proof that these injustices are happening in Pakistan, and one needs to stand up against it. Now, as soon as that incident happened, I remember there were quite a few Facebook events which cro started cropping up. 
and um, they started going around. There were candlelight vigils which were held for Maurice and Muneeb. There were protests held at Liberty Chalk for Maurice and Muneeb. And I remember at that time, I remember how so many people on my friends list bashed these events and said, you know, what are these events? You know, you have your celebrities, well-known Pakistanis, Auntie G's with their Chanel glasses and their little Gucci bags protesting. That's such a shame. At least kuch to ho rahe, you know? I mean, again, I reiterate, we're such a nation of critics. When we weren't proactive, everyone is still cribbing about how we weren't. But when there was some sort of change, some sort of protest, still people were criticizing. Now, in addition to the Maurice and Muneeb Sialpur incident, I really believe that the flood incident, the flood crisis in Pakistan, which ravaged thousands and hundreds of lives in Pakistan and continued, the, the impact of it is happening even now. Now, the flood crisis, it's really fascinating because the damage done by the flood was much more event, uh, immense than the earthquake a few years ago. And again, the young Pakistani generation, I, it makes my heart swell with, swell with so much pride and joy, knowing that all of you stood up, took matters into your own hands, and went out and used social networking websites, citizen journalism portals to try and make a change, to get aid, to raise awareness about what was happening. Two examples that I'd like to share with you. Now, the first example is a group that goes by the name of Responsible Citizens. They're a group of young Lahori boys, and basically they gathered media attention by, um, basically they'd meet every week at a certain spot in the city and try and clean up that area. And they'd invite everyone over their Facebook list. And it was fascinating. 20, 30 odd young Lahoris would go with their brooms and jharus, etc., and go and clean up that area. Now, what responsible citizens did was, via their Facebook fan page, their 3,000 or 4,000 members, they said that within one week, we'll be meeting three times. We'll be meeting at certain spots in Lahore, and we'll be going door to door, person to person, restaurant, cafe to restaurant, to get aid, monetary-wise, or uh, any sort of flood relief goods that they could transport to the flood victims. And what's fascinating was in those three days alone, in the heat, they gathered so much, and it was such hard work, and the turnout was great as well. They went physically, they went themselves to the flood-affected areas and distributed the supplies. And all of this was done via Facebook. Another example is a young boy from Sialkot who goes by the name of Ghalib Khalil. Now, Ghalib at the time, um, when the flood struck Pakistan, was 16 years old. And upon learning about this horrible, catastrophic event, again decided to take things into his own hands. And he went about registering his very own NGO online called Rescue Pakistan Youth Foundation, and again raised aid and awareness through social networking websites. And I have a small surprise for you, actually a big surprise for me. Ghalib Khali is here. Ghalib, could you stand up, please? <laughs> See, it's so amazing. A young teenager, a young Pakistani, can make such a lot of difference. And all of us can. We can. It's in us. We have to just hush those critics. See, at the same time, I understand the critics do say, okay, you know, via social networking, websites, etc., can tangible change really happen? Can tangible change really take place? Of course it can. It can slowly yet surely. It can over time. Again, the critics also say, do all these social networking websites and citizen journalism portals, you know, unka bas ek hi complaint hota hai. Ye to bahut pseudo kisim ke portals hai. They aren't pseudo. They also think that we're indulging in armchair activism. Again, I reiterate, when there was nothing, when we were lambasted and criticized for just sitting on our Facebook pages and you know, sitting around, we were, we were criticized for being totally uh, inactive and being desensitized numbskulls. And now that we're doing something, it's, it's incredible. There's so many people out there, so many young Pakistanis who are taking matches into their own hands. 
In 2008, I, along with some friends, initiated a portal uh, called the Green Kaleidoscope, or TGK for short. Um, the Green Kaleidoscope at that time, um, you know, most of us friends, we were in between our careers. And we sort of realized that, uh, you know, young Pakistanis, well, Pakistanis at home and abroad, needed a platform to raise their grievances and to just have their work published. That's all we really need, some encouragement. And ladies and gentlemen, in, in just those few months alone, we were inundated with articles. It was just so heartwarming. So many people sending us their photo essays, their columns, their articles. It was just wonderful. And after a year, we had to take it offline because, again, all of us got employed or went abroad for ed education. But to come back to my main point, it instilled, my experience with TGK instilled within me that faith that citizen journalism and social networking websites can bring about good change, slowly yet surely. The young Pakistani generation, we're aware. We want change. We're very passionate people. And inshallah, I have so much faith in that. It can certainly happen. Thank you so much.